Sorry, I just got closer. Yeah. Like this with your teeth. I'm gonna have something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> back to my channel and happy Monday. Surprise, surprise, Kayla Walker's still here. <laughs> Which video number is this that we filmed? Three. Video number three. So we're still fresh. We're still checking along. <laughs> Our minds are still fresh. And today we are actually going to be talking about five steps to shift to a success mindset. So this can be if you are a writer or if you are a businesswoman, businessman, really just any any part of your life if you're wanting to shift to more of a success mindset then this video is for you so we're going to talk about five ways you can do this let's get started the first thing you need to do when you are wanting to shift to a success mindset is to come to terms with your fears and also work on reframing them. So when it comes to really everything in life, and Kayla and I have talked about this before in some of our previous collab videos, but all of your choices and everything really stems from two major feelings, and that is you're doing things either out of fear or you're doing them out of love. So a lot of the time when you're kind of in a space where you're feeling like there's not enough, it's a space of lack, there's scarcity, there's greed, jealousy, envy, competition. That's all coming from a place of fear. Whereas when you're making decisions based out of love, you're focused more on abundance and gratitude and all of that mushy gushy fun positive stuff. So actually in Adventures for Your Soul, we earmarked a page. It's page 191. This book is by Shannon Kaiser, by the way, and it's amazing. And she talks all about it's a fear, her fear detox chapter. And she talks all about the different types of fears and how you can break up with your fears. So I just want to list some of these. I'm going to read off of her book and I'll link this in the description box below in case you guys want to get a copy. But the fears are fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of not having enough, fear of change, fear of shame or judgment, fear of intimacy or loss of freedom, fear of being alone, fear of losing love, dying or losing those you care about, and fear of inadequacy. So in each of these fears, she talks about the source. So like for fear of failure, the source of that is a lack of acceptance in your life. For fear of shame or judgment, the source is a lack of self-love. You're not you're not confident in yourself, you don't have that self-esteem. For fear of the unknown, the source is uncertainty or lack of control. So this book is really great because it kind of helps you really identify what your fears might be and what's sort of holding you back from shifting into a success mindset. And then what the great thing about this is once you can define your fears, then you can reframe them. When you're viewing things from a fear-based lens, you're focusing on the negative and that space of lack, like we were just talking about. But if you can reframe it, into looking at as more of what is the lesson learned, what's the blessing in the lesson, what's the positive thing that has come out of this, what what can you take away from it, what is the key takeaway, then re again, reframing that is going to help you shift out of that, that fear-based mindset and more into this success and abundance-based mindset. Everything that happens to you, you're telling yourself a story of what happened over and over and over. So you have to make sure that story is really empowering and moving you forward to your best self rather than kind of piling on the excuses of justifying why you can probably stay in that same okay-ish place, right? Number two is to forgive situations and people. So, and this also ties into really making sure you let go, like you forgive and let go of these situations. So from a very young age, we all have certain truths in our lives. So this is things like society, your teachers, your parents, telling you certain things about the world and how things work. So this could be something like how your parents told you you should never spend money and never go into debt and always, always save your money. So you would be in a place of lack whenever it comes to spending because you're always thinking about how your parents told you that you need to be saving money. Forgive them that that is their truth and their perspective up until this point and they're giving you the best guidance that they know how and that has worked for them in the standard of their life. You have to learn to forgive the people that have that have put their truths and their perspectives that they have instilled those 
their perspective on life like onto you they've projected that onto you and so whether or not you realize that you've subconsciously agreed to that and that's become a truth for you so just like the money example i gave that's a money story that you may have been living with and it's may causing you to not invest in yourself and your future and to not really move forward so what you need to do is identify that this is how you were raised or this is what you were told when you were young and whether you believed it or not it's something that whether you believe it or not now it's something that you agreed with back then and it's just kind of it's become like one of your not like a moral but it's become something that's like permanent it's like how you think and how you it it governs the way that you behave with money and all the stuff that you're yeah. going to do with it so you have to learn to forgive you have to learn to forgive your parents for or whoever it was that told you this story and you also have to reframe and rewrite that story and and tell yourself again it's what you're telling yourself and how you're feeling and what you're thinking and the things you're telling yourself so if you always have that scarcity lack mindset around money or around anything you're just going to attract more lack and more debt and more of all of that the third step in shifting to a success mindset is to visualize your dream life in detail and if you want to take it a step further it's really good to journal this out and actually physically write it down there is so much power in writing things down but i can give a great example of how two and a half years ago i was visualizing like every single day me going on a book tour and signing mm -hmm. my books and meeting my fans and my readers in person and taking photos with them and connecting with them and i would visualize this and i would visualize it in certain cities and in certain places so i just i had the images of it being at bookstores and i just visualized every aspect of it from being at the airport and getting my certain coffee order and the kind of luggage I was carrying to getting on the plane and like sitting in first class and all this kind of stuff. So I would, I would been visualizing all of this for two and a half years, come to find out now that in May I'm planning, you know, my first ever domestic book tour and everything so far that I've planned for that I've visualized over the past two and a half years has come true. So it's pretty cool to see this sort of unfolding and I'm excited to be able to vlog that experience because it'll be really cool to watch it back and see if it really did line up with what I visualized. Last August, I had a vision board with a lot of my goals about um, how I wanted to make an online course and about, I even had Kristen on my vision board just because i was like oh she's so cool like i definitely want to be like her you know things like that i had other things travel related and you know it hasn't even been a year she's one of my best friends like i have my online course yeah. coming out soon like i've been to dubai like i always travel but it's just like about really stretching yourself to the point where you visualize things so much that you're absolutely certain they're gonna happen it's not even a question where you know oh you know maybe this would happen but it's probably too far out it's like no this is gonna happen i just have to figure out a couple logistics you, you know? just have to figure out your path and your path is also going to unfold as you're working toward it but that's what we're trying to say is don't be afraid to dream really really big like i haven't really shared a lot of my really i've shared them with you but not on youtube some of my really big picture dreams of what i kind of imagine for myself like what i think is pretty far into the future but who knows it could only be you know five years down the road it could only be two years down the road but i was also visualizing speaking at writing conferences and hosting workshops and you know teaching those classes and workshops and being the keynote speaker at events and lo and behold because i've been visualizing this for the past two and a half years it's happened where in august i have my very first event that i will be a keynote speaker at it's all about the indies and then i'm also teaching a writing workshop at a writer's conference. It's the Permian Basin Writers Conference in Midland, Texas. So don't, you know, don't think that visualizing and kind of writing out your dream life and journaling is all like too woo woo because it's really, it's not. And this stuff works because what you're doing is you're putting that vision out into the universe and it's like you, it's like making a wish. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like these are the things I want for my life. I'm putting it out there and you cannot receive what you don't ask for. Once you decide, the universe kind of moves out of your way and also brings you to people who give you unique opportunities of exactly kind of what you're manifesting. Yes. Literally. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. 
It's cool stuff, try it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give it a try sometime. The next thing is to take inspired action. So like after you're visualizing and you know what you want is just to go after it. The best thing you can do is to actually take action, like to make a plan for it. So it's really funny because this past January, I just decided that this was the year I was gonna go on my first ever book tour. I'd been visualizing it for two and a half years. It's something that I really wanted to do. And I announced it without even having the cities nailed down and without even having reached out to any bookstore. I hadn't even started the process. I just said, nope, I'm going on book tour and this is gonna happen and I'm gonna make it happen and everything's gonna line up. That is like manifestation in action. That is taking inspired action, saying, I want this so bad and I'm gonna put it out there and say, this is what I want. Have I had to do a lot of research? Have I learned a lot throughout the process? Yes, but you know what? Every single thing that I've imagined for this book tour has happened or the right tools, the right people, the right resources have found me or I've been led to those right resources. So everything's just kind of aligning perfectly because it's something that I've wanted for so long and I've been visualizing it. But there comes a point where you can only work yourself up so much. Eventually you just have to pull the trigger and just do it. So the last one is to surrender control to how the dots will actually connect. So do what you can for the prep, obviously figure out the logistics, but there comes to a point where you have to surrender and know that the universe will work itself out like there it'll just happen as it may it's a very like um kind of feeling so again going back to my the book tour thing i announced it without having really done i i didn't do anything i didn't really prep for it i just knew that it was going to happen i knew that it was the right time i knew that it was i just had that feeling i've just been learning to listen to my intuition and i just knew that it was all going to work out but i i did have to surrender I've had to surrender control along the process because there's a lot of bookstores that just haven't returned my calls. They haven't returned my emails. I can't control whether or not they get back to me. I can't control their schedules and whether or not they do signings on like only Saturdays. I can't control if they don't have like consignment programs. There's a lot of stuff I can't control. So I just have to surrender that control and I've just had to be very persistent and just continue to reach out. And like I said, every single one of my stops, like I thought I would maybe have to rent out some spaces in some of the cities because I wasn't hearing back from some bookstores. I fully finalized every single stop and every single one of them is at a bookstore. So again, I really believe because I visualized this in my head and I was so specific and in detail mm -hmm. about how it was going to be and I took inspired action, I announced it, I manifested it, I said, this is what's gonna happen. And I just, I just did it. That's what I'm trying to say. You just have to take action. You just have to start somewhere. And then along the way, you just have to kind of surrender that control freak side of you that wants everything to go a certain way. Because honestly, if everything went the, exactly the way I wanted it, it, I wouldn't have a story to tell. It's kind That's of like so when people boring. wait for the right time to do something and that it never comes. There's never a perfect time. You have to time, just ever. know that, you know, okay, this is a, in alignment with what I want to do and who I'm becoming and I want to become. And I really just have to make it happen. So that is it. Those are the five steps to help you shift into a success mindset. We really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a a thumbs up to support my channel and also make sure to check out all of Kayla's videos and her channel as well especially if you love travel and writing and make sure to join her Facebook group write with intention if you are wanting to build your community of writers and just like-minded people who are awesome positive uplifting and encouraging it's all good stuff I will leave all of the links to all of her information in the description box below so make sure you check her out I'm not going to do my whole outro spiel thing because we still have a lot of videos to film after this one and a limited, <laughs> a limited amount of time to do it. So just know that everything you want to know about my self-study coaching program for writers, my podcast, my books, all of that information is in the description box below. We will see you guys in our next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> yes. You can start and then we can talk about the stories. You can start and then we can talk about stories. Well, okay, the first... <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you need to do. That's, that's it, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>